another mole has popped up, and after receiving several messages about a paper that finally settles the science of climate change, I thought it deserved to be whacked down and put in perspective. The latest urban myth to do the rounds of the internet is based on a paper by researchers from CERN, the European Particle Accelerator. Now I could read the paper they wrote, but why bother going through all that sciencey stuff when a thousand internet bloggers don't need to read the paper in order to tell you everything it says? According to Newsroom America, researchers at CERN have concluded that global warming is caused by the sun. How do I know that's true? Because it's confirmed by NaturalNews.com and countless other blogs, and of course by James Dellingpole at the Daily Telegraph. As Dellingpole himself admits, he doesn't read scientific papers, but if it's on the internet and Dellingpole believes it and repeats it, then that's confirmation that it must be true. The other conclusion that can be drawn from the paper, without actually having to read it, is that it now settles the science on climate change. The paper apparently has convincing new evidence that cosmic rays and the sun are the controllers of the Earth's climate, and that's settled. But before I go. Look, I hate to do this to you, but I am going to have to show you the paper that all this hyperbole and hysteria is supposed to be based on. I know it's tedious to actually check a source and read all that boring science, but let's see if the paper says what the bloggers think it ought to say. Let's start with what it doesn't say. It doesn't say the sun is responsible for global warming, or anything like it. Maybe Newsroom America copied the quote from James Dellingpole's column, but he didn't get it from the paper. He got it from another journalist and blogger, Lawrence Solomon. Solomon also seems to think the findings point to cosmic rays and the sun, not human activities, as the controller of climate on Earth. But the paper says nothing of the sort. So what does the paper say? Well, sorry, bloggers, but to find out, you actually have to read it instead of just copying and quoting off each other. The research is in response to a hypothesis by the Danish researcher Henrik Svensmark that cosmic rays could bring together or nucleate aerosol particles in the atmosphere, and that they could seed more clouds. Svensmark postulates that more clouds might cause cooling, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. What the researchers at CERN confirmed was that cosmic rays can nucleate small particles in the atmosphere. This is a very interesting piece of research, but it's a long way from showing that cosmic rays drive the Earth's climate. If we believe news from America, however, scientists were able to demonstrate that cosmic rays can form molecules that then grow seed clouds inside the atmosphere. In fact, the researchers specifically stated that they didn't demonstrate this. They wrote that because the nucleated particles produced in the experiment were quite small, it's not clear what fraction would grow large enough to seed cloud droplets. Even if they could seed clouds, would this be significant compared to the amount of cloud that's already up there? And if it is significant, what does that mean for atmospheric temperatures? Clouds have a dual role in climate. They reflect sunlight back into space and therefore have a negative cooling effect. But they also prevent heat from escaping and therefore have a positive warming effect. The cooling effect is greater in clouds near the ground and at the equator. The warming effect is greater in clouds higher up and at greater latitudes. So even if it could be conclusively shown that there is a slight cooling. How much of a mitigating effect would that have on the warming caused by increased carbon dioxide? But these questions and uncertainties aren't the reason climatologists have rejected the cosmic ray hypothesis. They've rejected it for a much simpler reason, because if cosmic rays do have an effect on the temperature of the Earth, then we'd expect to see that in the climate record. Cosmic rays have been stable for the last 35 years. Just as solar irradiance has been stable, so they can't account for the warming we've been seeing over that period. In short, cosmic rays and global temperatures can be measured over time, and they don't match up. So while the CERN researchers advance our knowledge of the way cosmic rays interact with the atmosphere, they didn't do any experiments to determine what effect this has on cloud cover, or what effect cloud cover has on global temperatures. Which brings us on to the next myth concerning this paper that CERN Director General Rolf Dieter Hoyer said scientists should refrain from drawing conclusions from the experiment. This obviously makes no sense, as one discerning YouTuber surmised. 
prohibited scientists from drawing conclusions from a major experiment. Well, why do the experiment in the first place then? If you're not going to draw any conclusions from it. The first thing that's obvious is that the paper did draw a conclusion that cosmic rays can nucleate aerosols. This is what the experiment was designed to find out and what it demonstrated very clearly. What Hoyer actually said, if we read the source of his comments in Die Welt, is that the researchers shouldn't interpret the results. Nigel Calder, one of the few bloggers who actually did read the paper, thinks the implication of Hoyer's words was that researchers should on no account endorse the Danish heresy, Henrik Svensmark's hypothesis that most of the global warming of the 20th century can be explained by the reduction in cosmic rays due to livelier solar activity, resulting in less low cloud cover and warmer surface temperatures. Well, if this is what he meant, there's a very good reason why his advice is spot on. The CERN scientists didn't do any research into how clouds affect global temperature or into any link between cosmic rays and climate during the 20th century. So how can they speculate on what the results might have been for an experiment they didn't do? And if they speculated that the global warming of the 20th century can be explained by the reduction in cosmic rays due to livelier solar activity, their paper would have been rejected by nature as undergraduate claptrap because they have no evidence for this at all. Since they didn't do any experiments on this, they would have had to go to other papers that show that solar activity isn't livelier. It's been very stable for half a century, and cosmic rays haven't been reduced in activity. They follow the stable pattern of 11-year solar cycles. If the researchers had to take anyone's advice, and I doubt they needed to anyway, it would have been Hoyer's to stick with what the results show, rather than Calder's, to go on a wild speculative romp that flies in the face of observations. Speculation without evidence wouldn't be published in one of the most prestigious journals in science. It would end up on a blog.